it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I want to continue on this week with some of my uh, vintage brooches and brooches collected from jewelry jars. There were a few last week that I missed um, that were from some of the designers I showed, so Trafari and Monet. So I'd like to show those first. Um, this is a Monet brooch, a lovely swirl. It could be a feather. It could be anything. Um, but very pretty Monet. This is also a Monet. Um, a much more modern Monet. Not exactly what I think of as their style. There's the uh, manufacturer's mark there. Um, but I don't know. It Just the way it's done, it looks a little cheap, I think. Not as classic, anyway, as... Uh, this Monet. Then there are a couple of Trafari brooches I missed. So there's this little butterfly, just gorgeous. And there's the Trafari marking. I love this. I think it was just so delicate. And then this little, I don't know, is it a seagull? Is it just a stylized design? And, well, I don't know if it's supposed to go this way, maybe that's why it's marked this, I don't know. That's, there's the Trafari mark right there. So maybe it is a, a, a stylized seagull. This is something a little different and I haven't found any uh, uh, like this since. This is a Lady Remington. There's the mark right up there LR and um, I think Lady Remington there was also a Lord Remington jewelry as well but Lady Remington I think they were they were associated with uh, the Fifth Avenue group not a hundred percent sure but very nice with the rhinestones and the enameling this is a Marks and Spencer uh, pin brooch and where is it marked? Oh, there it is up in there. I guess if I put it up right, the right side up, you'll see it even better. There we go. M&S for Marks and Spencer. Nice classy pin. Um, this is a, another Bond Boyd pin. This one is, it says it's sterling on the back here. Underneath here, Bond Point Sterling, but it's gold tone, so you can see that it's uh, must uh, be more like Vermeil with a gold uh, gold wash over it. Very pretty. I love the uh, the rhinestones in there. This is an unusual pin. Um, when I got it, I couldn't understand why it was marked Avon in this way. Where is the Avon? The Avon's right there. If I can focus in or not, and get you. Oh, it was there for a second. There's the Avon, but it also says Canada, and then there's a code number. So let me uh, zoom back in. This was not something I expected uh, to see for Avon, that, the Avon that we know of, and actually it's not. This is Avon of Belleville. So from Belleville, Ontario, in Canada, um, the, a totally different Avon jewelry company. So my first Avon of Belleville, and now I have one. Uh, this is another uh, Canadian brooch, uh, Dorlan, D apostrophe O R L A N, Dorlan, and a beautifully enameled leaf. Um, this is another cameo, and I don't know why I didn't have it in with my other with my other cameos. But this is a shell cameo. You can, I don't know if you can see th through it. Oh, you sort of can see that you can. It's transparent, very transparent. Um, a little rough around the edges here, but uh, you can see the sort of chisel marks in the carving. Um, so I quite like this and a little C clasp on the side. 
this is different. I love I love this sugar. This isn't really sugar. It's softer than sugar. I think more, a little more durable, perhaps. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be a Christmas bow with the green and the red and the white in the center, but it could be worn anytime, I think. Um, a lovely BSK piece. There's the BSK marking on the back. Really lovely. I don't have very many BSK pieces. This is unusual. This is Liz Claiborne, and I, I don't know, it looks older, like an, maybe an early Liz Claiborne. There's the, uh, the mark on the back. Um, it just, it looks like an older design. It doesn't look like a, you know, 80s, 90s design. But that's just me, perhaps. I might be misinterpreting it. Um, this is stupendous. Look how shiny he is. Isn't he gorgeous? Look at that beautiful enamel. This, if we can get it uh, to show up, I might have to. There you go. The Swarovski Swan. So I don't know if you could put a little, you know, bit of tissue or cotton ball in the back with some perfume if you'd want to do that or not. Um, I wouldn't want to harm the rhinestones, that's for sure. And there's, but just a gorgeous little turtle. Gorgeous, gorgeous from Swarovski. And as, as for marked pieces, this is an older pin. And it's marked over here. Not sure if we can focus in well enough. A bit more, maybe. Put my hand behind it. There you go. Adorna gold filled. And I'll have to look up what the other uh, symbols mean. It probably tells me how many carats in what country. Bring me back. Whoops. Excuse me. I'm having trouble getting my camera to come back to number one. There we go. So uh, just gorgeous. I love this with the green rhinestones uh, with the gold tone. So, so pretty. The heart, the little flowers. So that's it for some more um, marked pieces. I'll throw them back in my little tray. And then I have a whole bunch of pieces that are not marked. And uh, this is a little jewelry tray. My husband made a bunch of them for me uh, on the 3D printer. They're made out of plastic. So they're really nice to work to pull stuff. This is a, an unmarked pin. I love the design. I bought this from Marcia at our vintage store. Uh, it looks like it could be vintage, but it's, I mean, it's got the Y uh, clasp, or the Y setting for the brooch clasp, but I uh, have no idea how old it is. I don't think it's 50s. I think it's sort of maybe like a, re a, a reproduction. That's hard to tell. And then there's this lovely older pin with the Aurora Borealis Center, the textured gold tone petals of the flower, and just a, sort of a coppery, brassy back. I guess a brass back. So, I love this little blue pin. It is gorgeous. Great uh, small pin. I mean, size of my face. thumbnail, a little bit bigger, so maybe an inch at the most. Watch out for that dagger pin hanging there over the end, so a little bit older. Great color. Here is a blingy Aurora Borealis pin. I love the Nevettes. And uh, again, no marking, but very nicely made. Beautiful to wear, and I love the sparkle. I tend to keep the rhinestone things. <laughs> Here's a little bit different color. This is probably more modern, because you don't tend to see this sort of aurora borealis over the uh, kind of an orangey or amberish colored stone, um, but very pretty. Uh, and I love the design. I like these little leaves, individual leaves sort of sticking out from the, from the center. And then here's an older design, this sort of snowflake or, uh, 
asteroid. I guess I'm not sure what you would call it. I think this is more of a snowflake design. But I love the fact that it's got these brownish rhinestones. I guess a dark topaz. Or not really smoky topaz. They're, I don't know what you would call that. But again, uh, an older pin all riveted together. Very nice. This pin looks like a caro pin but i don't think it, it but it's not marked it just looks like one so i don't know if someone was imitating the design or how that worked but uh i, I kept it because it's an unusual design to find um not not like the usual sort of round or circular pins this i got from a friend who was donated who had a bunch of family jewelry they didn't know what to do with and uh, she donated this to me uh, I love it it's two scatter pins connected by chains so that you can uh, you know I, I don't think it's meant for it to be a sweater clip it's just meant to you know to pin them on and have this little bit in between so lovely they're almost like butterflies, or they could, they're probably meant to be flowers, but they kind of remind me of butterflies, these little pieces at the top here. Then there's this. I picked this up at a church sale, and this is glass, and these are blue rhinestones, and they are set into some kind of a, a gluey mixture, and I wonder if this was a pin that in the... 40s or late 40s early 50s you could buy jewelry kits that you would assemble at home for resale and I'm wondering if this was one of those kind of things because I've never seen anything with this kind of gluey stuff around that's holding it all together um, yeah, if you have any ideas let me know anyway it's gorgeous I think I paid like a dollar for it or something, but uh, I just thought it was a really neat kind of thing. And then here's a few pins. I have a few pins here that uh, were given to me by my aunt that were, uh, again, from family jewelry that uh, um, that someone had passed away and they had no nobody in the family really wanted them. So uh, she knew of my interest in jewelry. I love this. I love the brass color and the rhinestones in it. Look at how these are set with prongs. That's really cool. Um, I have no idea what the age is. Actually, they're all set with prongs if we look at them closely. Or, yeah. Um, but I love it. Just love it. And it's just a little C clasp. So, gorgeous. There's also this horseshoe. This needs some cleaning. I don't know if this is supposed to be a moonstone or if this is a pearl that lost its coating. Um, I'm going to just leave it the way it is since I don't know. But again, I think we have a C clasp here. Yeah. Oh no, we have a, a little bit of a safety clasp. Lightweight, but a beautiful good luck pin. And here we have this beautiful cranberry colored circle pin, cranberry rhinestones in a circle pin. They are gorgeous. The baguettes are just such a nice rich color and depending how the height, light hits them, they're light to dark colors. And prong set, look at how beautiful, there's the little prongs keeping them all in place. Um, so excellent shape. And again, not marked, but beautiful. And a final little piece from my uh, um, unmarked brooches, vintage brooches. I mean, it could be marked if you, if you could read what's on there. Oh, man. So, D, C, 1 20th, 12 karat gold filled. So we'll take it right back. So this isn't this pretty little pin with the rhinestones, um, that sort of bow shape. It's gorgeous. Now, gold filled always used to um, 
confuse me. It's like, why would you fill something with gold? Um, but that's not the way it is. It's actually, it's a tube of gold that's then filled with other metal. Um, and basically one twentieth of the weight of the metal is 12 karat gold on this. But until I got an explanation, I always used to wonder, why would you fill something with gold and hide the gold? <laughs> That's just, um, so rolled gold and, and uh, is very similar. Uh, but uh, that's a really pretty thing to end on. And it turns out it's marked and I didn't even realize it. So now I have to go put that information into uh, my database. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this, some of my little bloopers here. Um, and uh, it's always nice, kind of nostalgic actually, for me to go back through the jewelry um, that I've uh, collected or received and then and put away. Um, so again, till next time, have a great rest of the day. Bye from Pat Hood at Passions and Pastimes.